Current Social, Economic, and Political Issues Affecting Small Farmers in the U.S. And this is Unit 4. What is the perception of a small farmer? Is it the hippie that just wants to do something different? Is it an off-the-grid homesteader? Somebody that's a few marbles short of a load? Are you turning into an Amish person? Are you just wanting to get out of the get out of an office, get out of a cubicle? And so when we think about the perception, a small farmer does not really have a very positive outlook in society. But what is true about a small farmer? He loves growing. And I think that's my love of farming has developed over the years and it started out on a small farm and, and that continues. I love doing flowers, I love raising food, I love raising animals, and it's just something that I enjoy doing. A second thing is we like to have some independence of growing our own food. And we're dependent on ourselves for a large part of our food and, and we like that. Not only because it tastes better, it's also more healthy and you just get that feeling of satisfaction. The small farmer doesn't like to borrow a lot of capital. He doesn't want to be hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in debt to be able to be a farmer. A small, small farmer also understands permaculture. And maybe this is a new term for you, but permaculture is kind of the permanent culture and can it exist? Can we farm this way for a hundred years and have soil that's just as productive and have livestock that's just as healthy, healthy as it was at the beginning. It's a permanent culture. Can we have a permanent culture? And the, the small farmer has the perception that when he is finished with the land, when his time is over, that the land's going to be better than it was when, when he started farming it. And, you know, we own the land, but how we only own the land for a limited amount of time. There's still going to be land after we die. Our land is still going to be usable. And is it going to be better than when you first begun? Some of the social issues were kind of trapped as a consumer into wanting cheap prices. We want the dollar menu. We want something that's easy to prepare and doesn't take much time. But we have to realize that a big portion of our food dollars being spent on that processing and the ease of preparation that goes into that food. The low grain prices have made meat a staple in our diet. We haven't always ate as much meat as we do now, but the meat prices, due to government policies that have kept grain prices low has made it pretty important for us to have meat as a big part of our diet. And then the 48 million people that are on food stamps, they're not really all that worried about how much the food costs because to them, their food cost is free. And so we have to get them, we have to change their perception as well and try to get them to be a better user of their food dollar. Other social issues include the money spent on the food outside the home. We now spend more money eating out than we spend on our food eating in the home. And so again, you're paying for convenience, you're paying for the preparation, And the second thing on another social issue is the vegetarian and animal rights group that really do not believe that animals should be killed and that our meat diet, our meat-based diet is causing starvation throughout the world and we really should stop eating meat products.
some of the economic issues. Um, we have a large number of people on unemployment and working at, at a, a low paying job that's below their skill level. And so when they are shopping for food, they're looking for a cheap diet, probably more so than a healthy diet. And our health care costs in the future are probably going to be somewhat determined by how much cheap food we continue to have. Something that I've been telling my students in class is that the attitude about hard work, um, my example is that if, if I told them that I got up an hour early and went to the, the YMCA and worked out, that would be a positive good thing for me to have done. But if I would have got up an hour early and split firewood to use to be used this winter to heating our house, that would have seemed kind of silly. So the impression is that working out is positive and doing productive hard work is negative. And that's something we have to try to, to work on. So we have the high unemployment rate. We have the high number of food stamp recipients. And that sure opens up an opportunity for urban farmers. And a few weekends ago, downtown Chicago, having brunch at a small little restaurant about uh, two miles from downtown Chicago. And while we're sitting eating our breakfast on the patio, I could hear chickens uh, clucking in the background. Well, after breakfast, we did a little investigating. And there, right next to the restaurant, was about a one acre urban farm that two young ladies were working on the farm as a career in downtown Chicago and I sure felt that was kind of an interesting concept um, that you don't even that I don't even think about coming from a, a rural area. Some of the political issues that we have to deal with we do have a strong lobby for our industrial ag system that we have now uh, the, the Farm Bureau is a strong group, uh, all the commodity groups, uh, the corn growers, the soybean growers, the beef producers have a pretty strong lobby and the checkoff program allows them to um, promote their product and, and lobby at the same time. Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency has issues as well as we deal with confined livestock and the problems that are caused by um, those livestock being in confinement and also the chemical and pesticide applications that are normal in today's agriculture. Some other political issues um, we talked earlier about subsidies only for select co commodities. Uh, the grains benefit mostly there's little benefit for the livestock producer and so that doesn't really provide a true uh, supply and demand issue when the cost of the product is really uh, controlled by the government more than supply and demand. And we've talked about um, the food dollar. The farmer received 19 cents of the food dollar, but uh, the, the politicians want to say that the, the subsidies and the USDA programs are keeping our food dollar uh, lower, but with, such, with the farmer receiving such a small percentage, I'm not sure how much of that is true. And now uh, farmers are receiving uh, guarantee, or revenue, crop revenue insurance that's guaranteeing them to make a profit and that's really impacted the price of farmland as well. When you're guaranteed to make a profit you really want to farm as many acres as possible. So what do we need to do? What steps do we need to take? We need to change the perception of what a small farmer looked like. It's not some little old man in bib overalls. And it's not necessarily a, a young person either. It's somebody that really has the love of growing and really wants to be a producer. We got to continue to work on our culture that has the desire and the and demand for healthy, good tasting quality food. 
Another issue is the seasonal diet. We want to eat watermelon all year long, and we want to eat sweet corn all year long, and, and there's just products that we can always buy at the grocery store, and we need to learn that there's times when those products are not being grown in the area, and we need to kind of change our diet based on the season. And by doing that, that will also decrease our dependence on, on oil for growing and transporting our food crops.